Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Well, welcome. And you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are so blessed that you made it back out again tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I believe... I believe you're going to be blessed. Amen. Who believes they're going to get blessed in here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Just checking your expectation out. Because I say, well, you might as well go home if you don't want to be blessed. I mean, you know what you come for. You know, you just sit here and look at me. I'm, I'm handsome. Yeah, right. I got that. But um, that ain't the reason why you come to, to, to church. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I guess I'll just talk for a moment. And uh, let our let our engineering department kind of we're a little hot up here, not hot but hot mic. So amen. So uh, praise God, Hallelujah. Is everybody blessed tonight? Amen. Well, I believe we got a good word for you from the Lord tonight. You know, my dear wife asked me this morning. She said, "Well, you know what you're going to preach today?" I said, uh, "Nope, nope." pastor asked me the other day, he said, Jeff, you want to preach Sunday night? I said, yeah. yeah. Well, what am I going to say? No. Yeah. No, I don't want to preach. But you're a preacher, you know. You don't want to preach. Yeah. Of course. Um, of course, I, I, I consider it an honor and a privilege anytime I can share the word of God. Anytime I can share the word of God. And it's not, and I don't need a podium to share the word of God. Amen. Yeah. To those preachers out there, if you just got to have a podium to, to speak to to preach the word, I mean, what, uh, that ain't what you called for. Amen. Your podium is the world. Jesus told the disciples, go ye into the world. All the world. Yes. And he, he didn't say you had to have a podium. Right. Amen. Now, if you, can, if you can carry, you know, they're pretty, pretty, pretty nifty now. You probably can carry a little portable podium, podium or whatever. But you don't need a podium to preach. Amen. And you don't need a, a building to, to, to minister the gospel. Amen. You can minister. Ooh, yay, man, hallelujah. The Lord is here. A resounding boom, hallelujah. Amen. But yeah, you don't need a podium to, to preach the word of God. In fact, all you need is, you know, you can be standing in the yard talking to your next door neighbor about how they cut too far over into your grass. And, you know, you just minister to them in the name of the Lord there, you know. You don't want to talk about the grass too much because, you know, you know how people are about their grass, you know. But anyway, praise God. You can preach anywhere. Amen. Glory to God. Well, it sounds like we got everything just about right where we want it. Hallelujah. Um, thanks again for coming out tonight. Hallelujah. And I believe this is a divine appointment for everybody under the sound of my voice. You're going to be blessed. I expect, I, I know I'm going to be blessed because I expect the Lord to use me. That's my expectation. Anytime I speak the word, anytime my masters preach, I expect God, because I'm an okay guy, but unless God use me, ain't much to me. Amen? That's the way I, I, my personal view on me. You know, when it comes to ministering the word of God, I'm okay, but if God don't use me, I'm done. So my hope, my expectation, my desire is that the Lord will use me. Amen? And I want you to have the same expectation as well. Amen. It is not, it's not based on the individual. It's based on the spirit of God. Let's base it on the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our life, health, and strength. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Holy Spirit who indwells us. We thank you, Father, as we go before the, as we come before the throne tonight. And we thank you for this, this opportunity to, to minister your word. With, and we thank you, Father, that the word will go forth with boldness and power. Father, I ask you to speak through my lips and to process the thoughts through my mind that we may speak and say and do those things that are pleasing only in your sight, Father. And we just thank you right now that the people's hearts are, are open and receptive to hear what thus says the Lord. Amen. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, that as the word goes forth, it will go forth with boldness 
and power. Glory to God. We thank your lives will be, the, the, the ears of the people are open and their hearts are open. And Father, ready to receive a word from you tonight. Not only to be equipped, not only to be stimulated, not only to be provoked, but to provoke to change and provoke to be blessed. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it now. And we give your name, praise, honor, and glory for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All in agree with that prayer said amen. So we're going to be talking tonight. Uh, not going to be before you long. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're going to be talking about having strong faith. Amen. Having strong faith. Because we see, we see through the word of God that there are different kinds of faith that you can have. You know, we, we've heard it said that, you know, Jesus told the disciples, oh, ye of little faith. You know, and then we also heard him say that, you know, how is it that you have no faith? You know, or and we've also heard it said that you can have great faith or strong faith. And so I believe that the, the Lord has shared with us some things to help us get from where we have little to no faith to where we can be strong in faith. Hallelujah. Like Father Abraham. Amen. So we're going to be endeavoring to share those things with you tonight. And I just want you to be in agreement with me as we share these things that, that you will receive what you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First of all, turn in your Bibles with me uh, to uh, Mark, the fourth chapter. Mark, the fourth chapter. Amen. And I'm going to go ahead and turn over there myself. And we're talking about having strong faith. Amen. Everybody wants to have strong faith. But then, you know, your lifestyle needs to line up so that you can have strong faith. Your words need to line up so that you can have strong faith. Amen. Now, it's, it's, it's fairly easy to locate yourself and find out, you know, what kind of faith do you have? Do you have any faith? Or, you know, do you have strong or weak faith? Because the, the words that you allow yourself to say on a regular. It's what you say continuously on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not a one-time statement that puts you in a box one way or the other. It's what your continual conversation and your continual coming and going and what you consistently say and do on a regular basis. You know, faith is revealed through words and action over, over the long haul. It's not a one-time one chance saying or one-time action that defines your faith for you. It's what you do on a continual basis that defines your faith for you. So we're trying to uh, help you see some of the things that uh, promote strong faith in the life of, of a believer. Amen? So it's easy to locate yourself whether you're in faith or not. What are you saying? Are you saying, I believe God. The word of God is true in my life. The word of God is coming to pass in my life. I believe what God's word says concerning me, and that settles it. Uh, Pastor Hagin makes this statement, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Amen? So that kind of statement right there lets, lets you know and let others know where you are in your faith stand, in your faith walk. Amen? Are you saying, I believe God, or are you like Peter? after the crucifixion, warming himself by the fire and cursing like a sailor. You know, I believe that's where we got that term, cursing like a sailor, because we see Peter, you know, when he's warming himself by the fire, you know, he wants to, you know, convince other people that he's not a disciple, but he'd been walking with Jesus all this time, and they could tell you, I mean, you talk like those folks, man. You know, I heard Jesus talk, you know, down in Capernaum and, in, you know, the other place. And, man, you sound just like that dude. And so he had to go back to what he knew. He had to go back to the boat talk, you know. Well, blankety blank, no, I'm not. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you're not then. Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, you don't want to disprove that you're not with Christ. You want to prove that you are with him. Amen. You want to be numbered with him. Amen. Um, and we find that reference over in Mark 14. And uh, Jesus said we need to either be hot or cold. Amen. As the days draw near, and, and we are in the last days. I mean, it's, it's so much stuff going on now. 
I mean, all you got to do is turn on your TV and watch the news for about 15 minutes, and you will know that we are, this thing is drawing close. Amen? And as the days draw near and the, the battle lines are becoming more and more distinct, the so-called Christians that are sitting on the fence trying to be politically correct, one by one, they're being knocked off and being exposed for what they really are. Some are going to find themselves guilty by association. You know, what do I mean, guilty by association? Well, your denomination is, believes that, you know, the homosexuals ought to get married. But you don't necessarily believe that. You're kind of like, well, I don't really believe that, you know. But you're, you're guilty by association because you are with them. You are named among them. Yeah. You go to the church where they marry the homosexuals, right? Well, yeah, but that's my mom's church. But, but you was you there every week, too, you know. So you want to come out from among them. You want to come out from among them. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Let's turn there real quick. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. And when you have it, say amen. I know we started you off at Mark there, but we'll get back there in a minute. Hold your finger there, and we'll come back to it. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So, the Lord is telling us, don't be politically correct. Because you'll find yourself in a hot place very soon. And we ain't talking about in the kitchen. We're talking about H-E-double-L. Because you have decided that you're going to believe something else. Or you're going to be numbered with someone else. You're going to find yourself warming yourself by the fire like Peter. You need to come out from among them, get from around them folks cussing yeah. and acting like the world and doing all the kinds of worldly stuff. Come out from among that. Yeah. Come out from among that. James 1 and 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and that a man cannot expect to receive anything from the Lord in that, in that state where you are going back and forth, vacillating back and forth. You know, you, you saved today, but you was clubbing last night. You know, you was doing whatever the night before, but now you want to lift up holy hands without fear, without wrath and doubting. You know, can't do it. Pushing you off that fence. We're pushing you off that fence. Be hot or cold. Don't try to tiptoe around, try to, try to be something, something else. Amen? Now also, just because you've been in the presence of, of the Lord and had a great time in the Lord and I mean you know there have been times when you know I've been in services man and God has moved mightily and people have been healed people get blessed you know people falling out in the spirit people singing in the spirit man it just people just man, just have been slain in the spirit man I've been in those kind of services amen anybody else been in those kind of services where God just moved and I mean you just don't want to you just don't want to leave you know you know what I mean? Just the air is so thick. And I mean, it's like a fog in there. And I mean, it's like, you know, everybody's just, just laid out before the Lord, you know. And God is just in there. You know it's God. And I mean, you know, it's just, there's, there's, there's nothing better in the world that I've ever experienced. I've tried drugs. I've tried alcohol. I've tried sex. I've tried a few things. And ain't nothing can compare to that. Being in the presence of God. Nothing can compare to that. But just because you've been in the presence of God and had a great time in the Lord, A, does not mean that you are off limits to the devil now. Nope, don't mean that. And B, it does not mean that you're going to automatically respond in faith when you are tried. Now let's go back over to Mark 4. Mark 4, starting at the first chapter. Amen. Glory to God. When you have it, say amen. Glory to God. Now, we're also going to uh, find your place in your Bible, Matthew 8, first chapter. I uh, mean, Matthew 8, starting with the first verse. We're going to be going back and forth because these are mirrored, these are mir this, these two passages of scriptures mirror one another. Everything happened together. 
everything happened, Mark 4 and 1 through 41 and Matthew 8, 1 and 34 are the same story. Same, same, same description, just told by different, uh, different individuals. One's by Mark and one's by Matthew. Same thing. Amen. So we're, we're looking at the same story. Mark 4, 1. Now it says, now, now remember what we just said. Just because you've been in the presence of the Lord, A, does not mean that you're off limits to the devil. B, does not mean that you're going to automatically respond in faith when you are tried. Amen. And so we're talking about having strong faith. Amen. So you need to keep that in mind when you are de being developed in your faith. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So he began to teach by the seaside, and there was a gathering unto him, a great multitude, and he entered into the ship and sat, the sea, sat by the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parable, and he sent unto them uh, in his doctrine. And of course he talks about the parable of the sower here, and of course he talks about the seed being sown, and, and talks about the parable. And then it says, uh, ninth verse, uh, and he that has ear to hear, let him hear. And then of course... Then we skip down to the, let's see here now, where do we want to get to? About the 40th verse. And then we're going to come back up in, in a little bit here. 40th verse. And he said unto them, why, why are you so fearful? Is it that you, it, how is it that you have no faith. Okay? And so we're going to flip over to Matthew 8 here in just a moment to see the, uh, the other, the, uh, what was said over there. But as we're examining the fourth, fourth, ver uh, fourth chapter here, it talks about the parable of the sower. 14th verse, and the sower soweth the word, and these are the way are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately to take a word that take away the word that is sown in their hearts. So just because you've been in the presence of God, we see right here the devil's coming immediately to steal that word out of your heart. Amen. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stolen ground, and when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and when they have no root, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And of course it goes on here. And uh, let's see here now. Da, 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 da. Okay. And 33rd verse. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them, and when they were alone he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the evening was come, and he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and, and there were also with him other little ships. There arose a great storm on the wind, and the waves beat it to the ship, so that it was now full. And, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they wake him, and they said to him, Master, cast thou not that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So let's, let's, let's examine this story and, and, and capsulize it and kind of get the gist of what's being said here. Jesus preaches to the multitude, explaining how the kingdom of God works uh, in terms of seed time and harvest. Amen? And then after the, after the service, you know, Jesus has a staff meeting with the disciples. Okay? So Jesus has a staff meeting, giving further insight, and then the devil shows up in the form of a storm. Disciples run over, run to the back of the ship, like Gilligan and Skipper, talking about we get ready to drown. Jesus has to rebuke the disciples for having no faith. Hmm. Now, remember the first two statements that we just had. 
You just was it. I mean, I mean, Jesus is having Southwest believers, you know, voice of victory, you know, campaign meeting, Creflo and everybody gets saved twice. You know, Jesus done preached the Creflo and Ed Copeland, they got, got saved twice. So Jesus done preached, and now. You know, sent the multitudes away. A couple of them went home and got saved and everything. And so now Jesus is having a staff meeting with the 12. He said, okay, guys, that was a great meeting. You know, I mean, God is really good. You know, and they say, yes, Lord, you know, God is really good. You know, yes, he is. Yes, yes, the Lord is good. And he said, okay, does anybody have any questions? They said, well, we didn't quite get that parable that you was talking about. So Jesus, okay. Guys, sit down. Sit down. We've got to have a staff meeting. So Jesus sits them down, talks to them, tells them exactly what these parables meant. Now, Jesus always told his disciples, he always preached to the multitudes in parables. But then he come back and he explained to the disciples exactly what was being said. So they didn't have any fogginess in what was being said there. Jesus tell them, okay, this is what this parable means. And then, oh, okay, Jesus, we got it, we got it, we got it, good. Oh, we got it. Okay, well, all right, good. Peter, go and crank the ship up. We're going to go over to Applebee's and, and get some baby back ribs. No, of course not. You know, they didn't eat ribs because, of course, well, at least they would be beef ribs. <laughs> but anyway, Peter, crank the ship up. We're going to go over and we're going to go get some, some sweet tea and a, a, a white chocolate blondie with ice cream. Amen. I like those. Hallelujah. Amen. But anyway, so they encountered this storm. But you know, this wasn't just a regular storm. Because you know, Peter's a fisherman, been on the boats, they got all the ships with them. I mean, you know, they got, you know, sailor guys with them that experienced fishermen and sailors and stuff. This wasn't a regular storm. So, you know, it wasn't like, you know, they, you know, everybody was in, you know, a little pontoon boat. I mean, they was in ships. So, but the storm comes up, and it was so bad, everybody, even the experienced guys were like, man, we're getting ready to die. Let's get the house in order. You know, so they run down, they tell Jesus, Jesus, we're about to die. Do you not care? So this is when Jesus rebukes the disciples and says, look, why is it that you have no faith? This is right on the heels of Southwest Believers Voice of Victory, you know, staff meeting, everybody's like high five each other. Yeah, man, wow, that man, Lord is good, man. We we understood that thing, you know. God's moving in a great and mighty way, and yet and still, yeah. that nobody operates in faith when the storm shows up. Yeah. Not one of them guys. Not one. Jesus had to get up and handle it. That's amazing to me. Beautiful service. You know, the meet God moves. I mean, uh, of course, we're going to go over to Ma Matthew 8 and see that there were other things going on in the same day. I mean, you know, people getting healed, the leper getting healed, the centurion. You know, Jesus healed the, uh, the uh, centurion's uh, servant, you know, sends the word. I mean, all this stuff is going on, and the disciples are right there. They're not off somewhere else. I mean, they're seeing and being witness to all of this stuff. So now the storm comes up. Nobody has any faith. And Jesus corrects him on it. Okay? So, B, just because you've been with God does not mean you're going to automatically respond in faith when you are tried. So you have to be ever mindful, be ever watchful that you're going to do what, you're going to respond in faith when the devil shows up. Amen? Amen? Satan wants to get you to respond to his attacks according to the dictates of your flesh. Uh-huh. He wants you and I to look at the wind. He wants you to look at the waves. And he wants you to look at the circumstances. And he wants you to respond according to that. He does not want you to respond according to the word of God. He does not want you saying in the midst of the storm, for he has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They bear me up in their hands lest I dash my foot against the stone. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He doesn't want you to say that. 
He doesn't want you to be reminded of what the Word of God says because there's power in the Word of God. Amen? And so when you respond in faith, that's how you respond in faith. That's how you have strong faith. Because when you are tried, you're going to need to recant and recall and recite the word of God to put the devil on the run. When the devil shows up, when Jesus was tempted of the devil after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, he did not say, well, you know, I don't really believe, you know, such and such and such. And such. Just talk, talking crazy. Jesus said, what? It is written. Man shall not live by word alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So you're not to lean to the circumstance, to your feelings, to your emotions. You don't, you don't allow any of that to determine what your response is going to be when you are faced with the attack from the enemy. We all are being attacked by the enemy. No one is excluded. If you have called in the, on the name of Jesus, you are a Christian, you are under attack. You may not have to face the same things that I face, but you are going to face an attack from the enemy. Amen? And you need to know how to respond when the devil shows up. Give him a necktie party. Amen? Send him on his way. And the way you send the devil on the way, on the way is with the word of God. Not with your big muscles, not with your eloquent speech, not with what your mama said, but with the word of God. That's the only thing that puts the devil on his heels and gets him up out of there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It says over in Romans 8 and 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So you want to remind yourself, you do, not want to, you do not want to allow yourself to get into this emotional thing when, when you're being tempted and tried. They're, they're laying off on the job. They're firing on the job. They're, you know, they're cutting your pay. And they're calling you in the office and say, well, well, we just laid off so-and-so, and we, we, laid off, we, had, we had to lay some folks off. And, but the good news is you get to keep your job. But... Uh, we're going to have to cut your pay. Now, you can, you can respond in one or two arenas. You can go into, well, now, looky here. I've been with this company 20 years, and I've been faithful, and I've been this, and I've been that, and I'll have you to know another thing. I've been working overtime and not getting paid, and I've been doing it, and you can, you can go down that road. Or you can say, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm not moved by, your, by what you pay me. Your, what you pay me is, 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 is seed. I live by my faith. Y'all don't stop nothing in my household. No matter about what you pay or what you don't pay. All my needs are met according to his riches and glory, not, in, not according to McDonald's. I ain't uh, living according to McDonald's riches. I'm living according to the most high God. Yeah. My father, he is rich. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. There is no shortage in my family. Hallelujah. And you have to speak the word of God. Amen. Amen. You must speak the word of God if you're going to stand in the evil day and we all are going to have that evil day you're going to have an evil day your evil day may not be like my evil day but there's an evil day coming and you got to be ready for when the devil comes you got to send him on his way amen Galatians 5 and 16 says this I say walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh your flesh your flesh want to cut up you know, when they tell you certain things, or you know, somebody cut you off in traffic, you want to show them the, 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 the middle finger? You can't do that. You could, but that's not, that's, that's, that's not what Jesus was meaning when he said, by this shall all men know. Yeah. Yeah, he got, by this shall all men know that you're in the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. If you show them your middle finger. Not that you have love one for another. 
Now, the temptation gets strong sometimes because there's some crazy non-driving folks out there. And you wonder to yourself, how did you get your license? Where did you get your license? You know? But we all have these things that we have to, have to deal with and be faced with. But we want to come out on top, amen? And we want to be pleasing to the Lord, amen? Amen. Glory to God. So now, so we're looking at uh, a template for having strong faith. And we're going to be wrapping things up here very shortly here. Um, Matthew, 8th chapter. Let's look at the template for having strong, strong faith. Amen. And we're cool about to wind things up here. Matthew 8, 5th fifth fifth, fifth verse. This thing got, got, got laid on me just that fast. And Jesus entered into Capernaum, and they came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servants lie sick at home of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having servants unto me, and I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. And Jesus heard it, and was and marveled, and said unto them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. There is nobody that's a covenant person that has greater faith that I've seen up to this point. Got more faith than more faith than you, Peter. You just walked on the water. Got more faith than you, John. Got more faith than you and you and you and especially you. This man ain't even saved. Yeah. He is a Gentile. Uncircumcised Gentile. He got more faith than all of y'all. That's, a, that's essentially what he was saying. I'm just putting that in modern terms. Modern terms. So, so what, what, is, what does he have here? He has, he has an understanding of authority, number one. And number two, he understands that Jesus is authority. He has heard some things about this man, Jesus, how he's healing and, and doing great things, opening blind eyes, and people the lame are walking, the deaf are hearing. And he's like, Man, I got to get to this guy. But when he comes in contact with Jesus, now from what he's heard, he's experienced Jesus up close. And he said, whoa, you don't even need to come to my house. You just speak the word, and I know it'll be done. And that, my friends, is the template for faith. Taking God as his word and responding to it in faith. Taking God at his word and responding accordingly in faith. Amen. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. In a nutshell, that's what that scripture is saying. He's saying, Jesus, you ain't even got to come to my house. The maid ain't even come to clean up yet or nothing anyway. Um, I don't want you tripping over stuff. No, it wasn't what he was saying. That wasn't what he was saying. He was saying, I know that what you're saying is power in what you're saying. So you send that power, and I believe, and I know that it's going to come to pass, even as you have said it. So that, my friends, is one of the templates. And we also find another template for faith found over in Romans, the fourth chapter, with Abraham. But we don't have time for the sake of time. I won't go there. But if you want to jot it down, Romans 4 and 17 through 25, when it talks about Abraham and his faith. Amen? But we have many instances through the Word of God where we can be strengthened and encouraged in our faith. But number one, you want to remember that the devil is coming. But number two, don't get all off because the devil is coming because you have, you have the weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. Amen. You have the word of God. And all you have to do is put the word of God in your mouth and believe that it shall happen exactly as you've spoken and you're going to have the victory. Amen. We've already been given the victory through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And all we have to do is walk it out. Amen. 
Amen. Did you receive anything from that tonight? Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Hallelujah. We're done. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divide and the son of the soul and spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have spoken those things out through me that you would have your people to hear tonight. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that as the word has gone forth, that it will minister to your people. It will cause them and provoke them and propel them into the places that you would have them to go. And that they will be better for it. And we thank you for it now, Father. And we give your name glory, honor, and praise for it right now. In the name of Jesus. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button. Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving.